Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to create your own custom player controller in Unity 3D. This tutorial is created so you can follow along and recreate the steps I present. Please take the time to pause the tutorial and recreate your own scene. And by all means experiment with everything I discuss here. The more direct hands-on experience you get, the faster you'll learn the necessary concepts to create your own stunning games and applications. One of the key concepts I want to teach is to prototype fundamental building blocks of functionality and build on those blocks. Constant testing is one of the benefits of Unity 3D. Okay, let's get going. I'm going to show you how to set up a Unity scene so that you can use the keyboard to move a player character in a 3D environment. The first thing I'm going to do is add a quad object as a ground plane, and then I'll orient it so that it's facing up. Now I'll rename it to ground so that we don't end up with a messy hierarchy. Next, I'll add a capsule object as our stand-in for the player object, and I'll rename it to player. I'm also going to orient it, and we're not worried right now with 3D models at this point. We can always swap out our stub models later. Next, I'm going to create a scripts folder under assets in the project window. And then I'll add a new C -sharp script called player controller. The project window is where all of our assets are contained. Anytime I need to add something new to my project, it'll start off in the project window. Next, I'll double click on the player controller file to open that in Visual Studio. In the player controller script, I'll stub in our hooks for the player input. I'll add if statements to check for horizontal and vertical access input, as well as the jump button, which is spacebar by default in Unity. I'm going to add these in the update method. Using get access returns a floating point number determining the direction of the access button or joystick press. I can use that number to move my character accordingly, and we'll do so in the future. Next, I'll add stub code in our if statement so that I can quickly verify that the code is working. The debug log statement allows me to output text to the Unity console window so I can verify my code works without modifying the game this is one of my preferred methods of debugging my code, though it's not the only way. Now I'm going to add my player controller component, or script. The two terms are interchangeable in Unity, onto the player capsule. By hitting play, I'll be able to prototype my player controller component. If everything is working properly, I should see my debug log statements in the console panel when I use the keyboard to move my character. Now I'm going to add motion to my player object in my if statements. I'm going to access the game object's transform to move it in a given direction. First, I'll assign the horizontal motion to the X transform position. If the horizontal motion is negative, then I'll move the character in the negative x-axis. If it's positive, then I'll move in the positive x-axis. And then I'll assign vertical motion to the Z transform position in the same way I added the horizontal motion. Finally, I'll move the character up when the spacebar is pressed by changing the player's Y position and then back down when the spacebar is depressed. This won't resemble my intended jump, but will give me a good starting point. I'll revise the player 
to contain velocity and friction in a future tutorial. Let's understand this code in more detail. Accessing the transform component of a mono behavior gives us the ability to modify the position, rotation, and scale of any game object we attach our script to. It's a fundamental part of the Unity 3D component system. With more experience, this architecture will become more evident and flexible. We'll see the benefit. Okay, now we'll go back to Unity and press play to review the updated code. So far, I've set up a basic scene with a ground plane and a character object. I've created a scripts folder and player controller script. I've written if statements to check the user input and respond accordingly. I've tested my code after writing my first draft. Then I refined my player controller by moving the player object in response to user input. Please make sure you follow along in your own scene and recreate everything I have shown you so that you learn quickly and enjoy the experience. Remember, experiment on your own and have fun. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.